thank you for bringing me on the show. Oh, okay. Mm, you're welcome. <laughs> Can you introduce something about yourself for the audiences? Mm -hmm. I'm Kaylee Whalen. I'm a transgender woman from the United States. I come from Washington, D.C. And I'm here in Southeast Asia because I'm interviewing transgender people to share their stories uh, for a blog called Trans World Views. I did activism for transgender people in the United States, and now I'm trying to tell the stories of transgender people around the world. Wow. Um, I, this is a little bit of a hard question, but um, uh, I, I want to know, does it, when you, when you are transgender, do you need to do a surgery to be a woman? Something people really have to understand is Hormones and surgery do not make you transgender. They do not make you a woman. That is something many transgender people desire in order to feel more comfortable with their bodies. Other people who are transgender feel comfortable not having hormones and not having surgery. And those people are just as valid as a woman. Like my friend Plami from Thailand, she is beautiful, she's wonderful, she owns a restaurant, and she hasn't had hormones or surgery. And I know many transgender women I've talked to in Thailand, they don't necessarily want surgery, but they're happy with their bodies, they're happy with who they are. And I think that's a little bit easier in a society that accepts transgender people. Oh yeah, that's true. Because some people, they, they understand that there's more than just male, female, and that this idea that biology, you know, is dependent on your genitals or something mm, is very outdated. Terrible. And the other problem that we run into mm -hmm. is many countries and some states in the United mm -hmm. States require that you have surgery to change your gender oh on your passport in America, your social security or your government issued ID in different countries. Like in Japan, you have to have surgery that sterilizes you in order to change your gender marker. I didn't know that at all. I want to ask you about your love stories. Mm. Uh, when did you have your first love? I first dated a girl as my second year of high school. So that would be like 10th grade? Oh, 10th grade. 10th grade. grade. Like wow. 10th grade. It was very short, but she was in theater. I really, like I said, like the theater group. It was my senior year that I had like a girlfriend. And so 12th grade. Yes. Uh, and she was very different from the other girls. She was just very unique, kind of free spirit and she had gay friends, I liked theater, she liked the kind of weird mm. music I did. Weird music? Goth industrial oh, music. Okay, I okay, used okay. to go to clubs and dress up all pretty and she liked my fashion, I liked her fashion. Mm. We went to New York to like shop in all the mm. crazy, like funky stores on St. Mark's mm. Place. So, you know, like your leather jacket or something, we'd both be into like something like that. I remember I asked her out to the homecoming dance by baking her a pie. <laughs> okay. I Aww. baked her like, it because I love baking. That was one of my hobbies. And I guess that's not super typical for a boy that I like was obsessed with baking, but I like made her an apple pie and I left it by her locker with like a sweet note. But, like, will you come to homecoming with me? The pie. <laughs> and, and she did. So she did. sweet. Yeah. Oh. Did you both wear dresses? Oh, at the time, not to homecoming. Mm -hmm. But one day I was invited to go to the Rocky Horror Picture Show. Okay. Which is a show that's famous for cross-dressing and ah. bisexuality. And is very popular with the LGBT community. And my friends liked cross-dressing at the show. Teresa, my girlfriend, wanted me to cross-dress with her. Mm. And she and my friend Jessica dressed me up so wow. that I could go in a dress and be like cross-dressed oh. at this show with them. And she didn't necessarily know I was transgender, but she knew I was different mm. and she was okay with that, uh -huh. you know? 
it was nice to have someone who supported that. And it was so funny, because I remember being like, you want me to wear this? Really? <laughs> I don't know, like I was nervous. I was yeah. more nervous than her. She was like, yeah, you look great. <laughs> I was like, really? Okay. <laughs> Aww. And uh, at the moment, do you have any love in your life right now? Oh boy, I, ah. Uh, <laughs> I, I, uh. So I, I came to Vietnam to interview transgender people here. Mm -hmm. And I've met so many fascinating transgender people and one person I interviewed, I like really ended up liking. Mm. <laughs> and like late, and he's a, he's a very cute transgender man. And you know, I date different genders and I have dated men. Um, and I really thought he was cool. So later I asked him out on a date and we've like gone out on a date mm. and like, I hope to see him again. So. I'm so excited about that. <laughs> yeah, he's a very cute uh, mm. performer and yeah. uh, dancer. So you you have to spend more time in Vietnam. Yes. Mm. Yes. <laughs> okay. Yes. Uh oh, uh, like you told, you study as an engineer. Yeah. And why you choose the way becoming a blogger? I was very interested in math and science because I liked learning. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I liked asking difficult questions. But what happened in college was I learned that math and science aren't the always Math and science is not somehow more meaningful than literature or learning about the history of gender. Mm -hmm. And I learned it was just as challenging and just as interesting to study history as it was to study science. And I got very into studying the history of gender and sexuality and it fascinated me. This, And it became very personal because studying history became a way for me to understand myself mm. and also i started studying southeast asia and i started studying the philippines and thailand and vietnam and that helped me also understand myself because i learned about transgender people in other countries it took a long time before i said oh i'm a blogger i'm writing about the community but i spent years doing paid work in the nonprofit advocacy, so NGOs who advocate for LGBT rights. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So for seven years and more, I worked at LGBT NGOs in the United States. And that was how I learned to talk to the media and to write and to do social media. And sometimes I'd write articles, like ghostwrite them, like for the executive director of the organization who mm -hmm. I would write her article and then it would be her article but I'd be you know, the one of the right ghostwriting yeah so now I'm writing for myself for my blog trans world view and it's what I've wanted to do I want to tell the stories of transgender people around the world I want to do it in a way that is respectful of the community and that says tell me your story I'm not going to tell you how you should tell me your story. Just tell me how you understand yourself and I will help share that story. And that's what I'm interested in doing. And that's why I've been interviewing transgender people in Thailand and Singapore and Vietnam and my friend from the Philippines because I want them to tell their stories in their words. Okay. I know you just stay in Vietnam for a short time, but do you have any idea about uh, LGBT's community in Vietnam? I came here because there was a very large transgender community. Vietnam has a very visible transgender men organization, and I really like that, and I learned from that. The big hope is that transgender people can change their documents, their mm. IDs. If I'm a transgender woman, my ID can say female. If I'm a transgender man, my ID can say male. And also, and that's something a lot of transgender people here 
want to see happen because it will help them get jobs. It will help them travel and have the mm. right ID on their passport. For a transgender man who wants to marry a woman, that would allow them to do that. Now, I also believe anyone should have the ability to marry. Like two people should have the right to marry each other. Doesn't whether, matter whether what they're a man is. or transgender or female mm. or whatever. And so, so Vietnam does not ban gay weddings, but they don't really allow it. But they, they don't really have yeah. any legal weight. Yep. Uh. So you can have a gay wedding ceremony, a same-sex marriage ceremony, but it doesn't mean that you now have a marriage license that gives you the same rights as a married couple. So those are important issues. Mm. That, and I've learned about stories of transgender people here who get denied jobs, Aww. you know, who get kicked out from their families, who face discrimination. I think actually Vietnam for me has had an amazing transgender uh, and LGBT community. And it makes me really want to spend more time here. And I was, mm. I didn't know when I came here just how big and visible the LGBT community was. Within that community, have you uh, met any uh, or made any cool and interesting memories with the uh, Vietnamese people? Last night, Funk, Ooh. just last night, just last night, uh, Gender Funk had drag performance night. This time, there was a posing battle. Mm -hmm. A posing battle. Posing, posing on stage and like dancing and like being like a model on stage. They eliminated you like in a game show, mm -hmm. and there were like six, seven people. First round, you know, there was like high fashion and like mm -hmm. somehow I did okay and I stayed. And then <gasps> the next you round- You were taking part. I was taking part, yeah. Oh. And I'd spent forever on my outfit and I was like very like elegant, like Victorian drapey, 70s like, style, flowy long, okay, you know, I got drapey. It. The dance battles and everything and it eliminated. Next round people got eliminated. And I got to the final round. Oh! And then like the category was just go crazy. Just oh, show yes. us your stuff. Okay. And um, I did like a handstand. I did like oh my God. crazy like moves on the floor. Like it was <laughs> it was very fun, like dropping to the floor and like very dramatic. And the, the person I was up against was a model, like a professional model. And I'm like, I can't win this. Mm -hmm. But I actually won the competition last night. Oh, oh my, my gosh, God. Yeah. congratulations. Yeah, so I won the posing competition. Oh, wow. Thank you. And after you won that, like, what, what does it make you feel like as a, as a transgender? It made me feel very confident. Mm. Sometimes I don't feel confident because I wasn't taught how to be feminine. I wasn't, you know, growing up, dressing up or like pretending to be an actress or a model or like mm. learning to walk or pose dance or, or pose. Like for me that I had to learn that later and that's harder and I get nervous, I get anxious. Mm. Um, and so in this case, I just, let things go and I just got up on stage and posed and it was really cool. Okay, I know that you will stay in Vietnam longer because of the guy. <laughs> and oh, yes. Fuck, what's yeah. the plane in near future? So I'm gonna perform at Bombix, Thailand, and then I'm likely gonna come back here Maybe go on some more dates, you know. Okay. We'll okay. okay. Uh, last question is, um, do you have any message for um, uh, other LGBT members considering your journey and some advice that you can give them or, or anything motivational that you would like to, to send to them? Well, I think what's really, really important for people to understand is that you can love who you want mm -hmm. and live as the gender you want to live. I would love to continue, but it's the end. I think this is a, the time to say goodbye to our lovely Kaylee. Mm. <laughs> Thank you so much for having me on. Thanks, Thanks for, for being coming here. with us today mm. and share your stories. You guys can check us out on uh, YouTube and uh, follow the MCV media link. Uh, like, subscribe, follow us for more interesting stories about the LGBT community. Goodbye! Bye! Bye.